The breaking news is that law enforcement sources say there are multiple fatalities following the school shooting at Santa Fe High School in Santa Fe, Texas. One of the students that was in the school this morning, McKenna Evans, was, was with me before we went to this press conference. McKenna, are you still with me? Yes. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry I had to jump away to get that update. You were telling me, right when, right when we were just speaking, you were telling me that the, teach, the principal ran to you and said, run. And when you moved across the street, your aunt actually called and informed you that it was a shooting. So when you first, the first time you learned of how dangerous the situation was, it was from your aunt giving you a phone call. Yes. What did she tell you? Um, she said that, um, are you okay? Um, are you outside of the school? And I said, yeah, what's going on? And uh, she said that there is a shooting and her husband is a cop in um, Texas City. And she said, uh, that he was on his way over there and that uh, they said that a cop was injured. But um, I'm not sure if that is correct or not. Right. But, did, you, yeah. did you see, did you, some of the students said that they heard gunshots. Did you hear gunshots? No, ma'am. Um, I was on the opposite side of the school, so um, I did not hear anything. Did you see, in, in, of course, did you see anyone with a gun? I assume no. No, I didn't. And what are, you, what are you hearing from your fellow students? Um, about the same thing. They, uh, whenever we were outside, they were saying four people were shot and that kind of stuff. Yeah. McKenna, how old are you? Um, I'm 16. So what grade are you in? A uh, sophomore. You're a sophomore. This is uh, tough for anyone, no matter how old they are, what grade they're in, or what part of their life they're in to deal with this morning. How you doing? Um, I'm okay. Yeah? Is it hard to process this still? Yeah, it is. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for, thank you so much for getting on the phone with me. I really appreciate it. Please take care of yourself. I will. Okay. Thank you, sweetie. All right. Let's get back to the reporting and some updates that we may have for you. I want to get back over to Jessica Schneider. She's been working her sources trying to get some more information on this school shooting out of Santa Fe, Texas. Jessica, what do you have? Well, Kate, as tends to happen in these school shootings and other uh, other shootings, we're getting information little by little and trying to confirm mm -hmm. it all as it comes in here. So what we have right now from law enforcement sources that have talked to me and my colleague David Shortell, they're saying at this point, multiple fatalities. We're not sure on the exact number, but that's the information we're getting right now. In addition, on the ground out there in Texas, we're getting a bit more information from some of the local officials there, the sheriff's department out there in particular. So what we just learned is via Twitter, and it's from the Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. He, he tweeted this out, or the department tweeted this out. One is in custody, a second one detained, oh. and injured police officer is being treated. The extent of his injuries are unknown. So, Kate, obviously in the first part of that tweet, one is in custody, a second one detained. That appears to refer to a gunman or gunmen. So we're still checking on that, getting more information, because it does appear that at least one gunman right now is in custody and a second one detained. But again, working to get more information from the local officials on the ground there. So what we do know is from the local officials on the ground there, obviously, this is no longer an active shooting scene. They have secured the high school. You can see the pictures on the ground right there. And now they're really working to process this scene. So that's why we're not getting official numbers just yet on any dead, but we do know that it is multiple dead. In fact, the sheriff's office also tweeted that this is uh, multiple casualties as well. Um, we've heard about many of the people being treated there, the injuries going to that local hospital in nearby Galveston, Texas. So, Kate, we're working to sort all this information out now. I know that my colleague Evan Perez is also getting more information from his law enforcement sources, so we're working through that right now. We might have an update for you in the next few minutes, but right now, multiple fatalities and the sheriff's department out there in Texas saying that one in custody, another detained. We believe that that may pertain to the gunman or gunman or gunman. Kate. All right. All right, Jessica, jump back up. You know, we'll bring the information as soon as we get it and we get it confirmed and squared away. I really appreciate it. While we're waiting for that, let's talk about this. Let me bring in uh, CNN's senior law enforcement analyst Tom Fuentes. He's the former FBI assistant director and CNN law enforcement analyst and, for and former FBI supervisory special agent Josh Campbell. Um, Tom, too many times we've been talking 
that we get together and to have to talk about this as this is all playing out. When they say it's no longer an active shooter situation, they're now processing the scene, what all is happening right now? Well, first, Kate, that means that they don't think there's another shooter on the loose that poses a risk to anybody at that school or in the general community. So they feel that having this person in uh, the shooter in custody and possibly one other person mm -hmm. uh, also being detained, that that's the extent of it, that they don't think they have anybody else that may pose a threat. Also, they would be withholding the name, and hopefully they have the name, but they would withhold it anyway until they get a chance to find out where that person resides and execute search warrants at the residence. And that would be for the purpose of obtaining information from computers, laptops, yeah. desktops, other media devices, um, papers, documents, posters, any other information that would lead to identifying this person as being involved in this and possibly a motivation for the person to carry out this attack. So those things are extremely important right now. We hope the authorities have the identity and the person's residence determined and that they can get that accomplished. And that's why they wouldn't release that information uh, to keep the media and other uh, curious people away from the area where they're trying to do their work. So we're hoping that that's in progress right now and, uh, and being done and they can update the public in the near future. I think there is an advantage to releasing the identity as soon as they can because all kinds of other people, whether it's coworkers, neighbors, friends, acquaintances, uh, may be able to come forward and lend appropriate uh, and important information to the investigation. So, but they won't do that till they finish with the residents uh, and the searches that they're conducting there. Josh, one one consistent thing that we've heard from the eyewitnesses, some of the students that are coming out, is that they heard the fire alarm going off. They thought they'd had a, they, they thought they, it was a fire drill, and it surprised them because they just had a fire drill. What do you think that means? Well, so I think right now it might be too soon to determine, you know, what was the cause of that. I could see two different uh, views here, one of which being obviously if someone is trying to uh, alert people that there's some type of situation to get out of the building, that may be something that, that you know, someone might pull the fire alarm, for example. Also, the more sinister view here is, uh, and again, it's just too soon to tell, but if a yeah. shooter is attempting to gather as many people together in one large location um, in order to, you know, increase the number of fatalities, that would be one way, you know, that they might do it as well in order to get them into the hallway, for example, which again is just you know heartbreaking to think, but yeah. too soon to tell right now. I think one thing that's interesting um, among many things that we've learned as, as you know the events have unfolded is you know the law enforcement officers there, the sheriff's department is obviously in a very precarious situation because they want to provide information to the public, they want to get that out, um, but also you know have to ensure that, that that information is as accurate as possible. And if you look at the wording that they use, that you know one person in custody, another person has been detained. Uh, yeah. To me, that doesn't say that they necessarily see that person. As as necessarily another shooter. Uh, otherwise, they, you know, they wouldn't use that kind of language. Detained, detained is, you know, used as someone is being, you know, questioned or trying to determine, you know, whether there's involvement. So I, I don't think we can jump to say right now that there are two people involved, um, you know, with any great certainty. Mm -hmm. But that's something obviously that we'll learn. And then another thing is that, you know, you have a law enforcement officer that's reportedly injured now, which tells me that, you know, obviously we don't know if that's a school resource officer or a deputy that was maybe responding, but there at least was some kind of contact, um, assuming mm -hmm. that it's a, a gunshot and not just, you know, some other accident, but uh, that the person made contact with the shooter. And it's very interesting because in a lot of these instances, we've seen the shooter take his or her own life. So the question, once we get the motive, will be, you know, what caused this person to finally give up? Yeah, and again, as, as I know you, you both know better than anybody, it's these early reports, it's a fluid situation. We're trying to get it all nailed down. Let's get some more detail. Let's get, I think there is some more information getting in on our breaking news of the shooting at Santa Fe High School in Santa Fe, Texas. Jessica Schneider is back with me. Jessica, what are you hearing? Well, Kate, we're now hearing, according to local affiliates on the ground there in Texas, at least eight people killed in this school shooting in Santa Fe, Texas. This is a number uh, that we're hearing from local affiliates on the ground. We have heard from uh, our federal law enforcement sources that there were, in fact, multiple fatalities. But as I've talked about before, this scene is still being processed. The tactical teams are still out there. While this is no longer an active shooter scene, 
there is still a lot of work that needs to be done on the law enforcement side. So while we report eight numbers according to our local affiliates now, there is the possibility that that number could grow. We've, we've seen scenes, unfortunately, like this before. It was just a few months ago in the middle of February that we saw something like this in Parkland, Florida, yeah. where 17 people ended up being killed there. This is a very fluid situation here, Kate, and we're trying to get as many details as we can. It's a mix of local officials on the ground who have been tweeting and talking with our local affiliates there. Mm -hmm. We're getting some information from federal law enforcement officials as well. As we mentioned, the Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. He had tweeted out that one was in custody, another one being detained. We uh, we believe that that pertains to the gunman here. Um, but again, unfortunately, the number that we're hearing coming out of the local affiliates there in Texas, eight people killed. But again, we are working our law enforcement sources as well. I know that my colleague Evan Perez has been in touch with law enforcement officials and again unfortunately that number could potentially grow this is all a bit of preliminary information yeah. as they are still working through this scene uh, this has only been ongoing now for for an hour or two this all happened you know as students were entering first period there at the local high school in santa fe texas and of course kate we've heard as well from from the uh, people at the hospital in Galveston, Texas, where a lot of these people have been transported. So this is gonna continue to evolve. I know that uh, we're gonna hear an update from the local officials on the ground there at the hospital, I think in like the next hour. So again, unfortunately, the number that we have right now, eight people killed in this high school shooting in Santa Fe, Texas. Kate? All right, Jessica. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Let me get over to crime and justice reporter Shimon Prokipes for more on this. Shimon, eight people killed. That's the number now. What are you picking up? Yeah, I, quite sad again. And here we are again, right, uh, Kate, uh, talking about another school shooting. And I want to talk a little bit about what Josh uh, Campbell there was saying earlier, you know, uh, the, the idea that two people have been t detained. Uh, yeah. We believe one of those people, obviously, is the shooter. We don't have any indication that there was a second person involved in this. But I think, as Josh was saying, uh, in a lot of these situations, people are, are detained and questioned just to make sure that they're not also involved in this. Uh, and really, I think for everything we gather right now and talking to officials, they're trying to figure out out obviously the motive, what connection this shooter uh, had to the school, and really what, what sparked this, what started this. Uh, and that's going to be sort of the part of this investigation that's just beginning. Uh, but it is, again, like a lot really is not known. Uh, local affiliates there obviously reporting the number of dead, and, and we do know that the shooter uh, is in custody. Outside of that, you know, it's just a process now for law enforcement there uh, to go ahead and do their investigation and try and figure out uh, what's going on. And really, you know, we time and time when these things happen, uh, you know, just the toll this takes on these communities. Uh, and really, you have another situation here with law enforcement mm -hmm. having to deal with such a horrific scene, uh, with the number of dead inside that school. Uh, you know, one can only imagine uh, how hard this is for that community now and certainly the law enforcement folks uh, that are now trying to put together exactly why this happened. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Shimon, stick with me. We got a lot more information coming, and I know you're working your sources to try to get some detail coming out.